KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson and the Adai Tano Program. Harley Davidson of Guam, visit our new showroom, now located on Route 8 in Mighty. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Timuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Coming up on your primetime news, not taking any chances facing a jury, a man takes a plea deal for the death of his co-worker. Crystal Paco has that story from court. Plus, school safety is the hot topic as last night's Guam Education Board meeting. Carmen Terlahi has the very lace with that issue. And the 34th legislature holds their last session of the term. Chris Barnett reports. Hoffa day, friends, and good evening. Thanks for watching us live on KUM TV and streaming us on Facebook Live. We're glad you're joining us. As Jonathan Ross Pangolina is not taking his chances with a jury. And rather than head to trial today, the accused killer took a plea deal with the government. Crystal Paco reports. He's taking responsibility. How do you wish to plead to manslaughter as a first degree felony? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Jonathan Ross Pangolina narrowly averting trial and entering a plea agreement with the government instead. He faces anywhere from 3 to 15 years in jail for the death of his co-worker, Liebrich Menglutnia. Back in March, the men got into a fight after a mess Chamorro celebration at their work. The fight ended with Menglutnia on the pavement and unresponsive. According to Prosecutor Jeremy Kemper, the plea deal requires the defendant right, participate so in anaphimalic services with the victim's family. That needs to happen before the sentencing. That could be something that would affect uh, the party's positions on what the request ultimately is for in terms of prison time. After the hearing, the victim's family shared a few somber moments. What took him so long to man up for his mistake? Family don't cross family. But whatever happened, happened, and we just hope that he gets the max of 15 years. We're going to stand together until it's all over, and we just pay justice, does his home work, and find him 15 years or more if possible. And it's a Merry Christmas. At least he man up to his mistake. Eleanor Manglotnia St. Nicholas, a second mother to the victim, in tears. By her side, two of his children, 11-year-old Tamia and 15-year-old Tristan. This will be their first Christmas since their father's passing. Thursday's hearing, leaving them emotional. Happy and sad at the same time. It's happy because we got the verdict, like I said, before Christmas, but we're sad because we don't have him on Christmas. And this is the holidays that we really need each other the most. Sentencing is set for February 14, 2019. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Crystal Paco. Elsewhere tonight, it was quite the unfortunate incident for a Port Authority crane operator on Wednesday after a gantry crane shut down mid-operation. John Santos, the acting deputy general manager of operations and maintenance, tells KUM News that the crane operator was loading containers when the generator shut down. Now, thankfully, GFD was at the facility and safety officers helped transport the operator to the hospital where he was released Wednesday night with only a sprained wrist. Santos says the gantry crane is now fully operational. And although the port continues to do an assessment to determine the case of the shutdown, Santos says, and I quote, we don't take the situation lightly and we're glad the operator was able to be brought down safely We'll continue to monitor the other three gantry cranes that are on the waterfront. Jason, issues of school safety took a hot seat at the Guam Education Board meeting after a student threatened to bring a gun to Ocean View Middle School. Parents, teachers and staffers alike voiced their concerns directly to the board, asking officials to re-examine disciplinary policies, fearing a possible tragedy. Carmen Jalahi explains in our next report. Parents call it a scary moment when they drop their child to school with worries that they might not pick them up, some even deciding to keep their students home. Concerns about safety from stakeholders at Ocean View Middle School spilled over into the public comment period at the Guam Education Board meeting Wednesday night. Carol Hinkle Sanchez spoke with tears in her eyes. I'm a parent of two kids that go to that school. Sanchez's worries stem from an incident where an Ocean View Middle School student threatened to bring a gun and allegedly shoot students and staff. She urged the board to consider other disciplinary alternatives for the student. You have board policies that should be followed. If the student threatens or attacks another person with it on campus, he threatened. While he was on campus, he was going to go get a gun and bring it back and shoot people. Staff, students, so that threat is there. 
and that requires expulsion for one year. Though Chairman of the Board Mark Mendiola made it clear it's the superintendent, not the board, that has a direct hand in determining the consequences of such threats. Now, yes. I have to earlier I stated that, you know, based on our the law, Correct. we cannot address any student discipline issues. I know, and I understand. And so, I, I just want to be, you know... You don't have to discuss it with me, but I will tell you what I know. And I'll leave it at how you want to take it. I have a right as a parent. Teachers also spoke up, like Doris Terlahi, a librarian at OMS, who says though she trusts teachers and staff will protect kids at all costs, GDOE should have consistent and effective protocol. The lack of policy is what's gearing the decision, and I think it's this board's responsibility to us, according to law, that um, to make our school sites safe. We can come up with a plan, and the problem is not a plan. The problem is something that happened, and even if we put SRLs there or if we put somebody at the gate, the problem is still there. It doesn't remove the problem. Board members also wondered when a threat goes far enough to get GPD involved. Chairman Mark Mendiola did refer parents back to GDOE's statement that any threat is taken seriously and reported, trying to reassure parents that GDOE does follow federal guidelines for student discipline. Superintendent John Fernandez says he will consider reviewing policies, but as a parent, he understands the reason for concern. I don't have any problem with the, 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 the concerns and issues raised. Today, my school was locked down. My son, my son was uh, in, the, in the school that was locked down until going elementary. And so, you know, I have the same concerns as a parent, you know. So what happens when you're a student, but as a superintendent, what I rely on is the administrators and the teachers there to ensure that those protective factors that we have in place are put in place. The Guam Education Board made a decision to hold a work session to discuss safety policies. Chairman Mindiola says the board values public input and is working to schedule a meeting in the next coming weeks. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Terlaki. Senators may have had the last session of their term yesterday voting on several measures, including passing a bill that may provide a golden parachute for one outgoing senator. Chris Barnett has more. Senators yesterday said esta at the Guam Congress Hall in what could very well have been the last session of the 34th Guam Legislature. In a month that saw a cavalcade of special interest legislation, bills to benefit companies that donate to political campaigns, bills to give campaign donors unfair advantages, bills to benefit friends of senators. So it was only fitting the last session of this term feature a bill that would benefit senators themselves. Enter Bill 361, a bill that circumvented the Guam Land Use Commission and sought legislative approval to give landowners the option to rezone land fronting Marine Drive and Jigo. 361 allows landowners on the lots in question the option of using their land for commercial purposes, something they would normally have to see the GLUC to do. The rationale from Senator supporting 361, it's been done by the legislature before. Senator Tom Addis' Bill 361 passed overwhelmingly, nine votes to two, but not every senator voted on it. Madam Speaker, I ask to be excused from voting on this measure due to a conflict of interest. Madam Speaker, I respectfully request that I be excused from voting again on personal interests. According to Bill 361 committee reports, Senator Mary Torres' brother-in-law, Chris Torres, wrote to the Legislative Land Committee stating his support of the bill. Torres, an owner of MEC LLC, well, that company owns almost four acres in the affected area and stands to benefit from being able to use its land for commercial use. Now, Senator Jim Espaldon's family trust also owns property in the area affected by Bill 361. Espaldon sits on the Legislative Land Committee, and although he excused himself from voting on the measure, he was directly involved in the committee process for Bill 361, even voting to report out the bill. The Espaldon Trust owns nearly two acres in the area affected by 361. Again, the measure passed 9-2 to two with Senators Therese Terlahi and Talina Nelson voting against. Now, Senators passed several other bills and voted down controversial Bill 350. Legislators also giving the floor to their outgoing colleagues. Five sitting senators will not be returning to office next year. Madam Speaker, I thank the people of Guam for the honor of serving our families as their senator. I would always try to maintain a position of fairness.
I think it's no secret uh, to any of my colleagues or anybody in the government that my act swings both ways um, as, as far as fairness goes. Uh, this past eight years has been um, the best, probably perhaps the best eight years of my life to be able to serve our people. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I want to thank my family, my, my wife. She's put up with a lot, and over the 12 years that I've been here, she has accumulated a 12-year list of honeydew projects, and now I think I might have time to attend to at least one or two of them. I leave here uh, fully confident that the people of Guam are going to be taken care of and that their interests will be uh, certainly looked after uh, quite well. For Guam News Network, Chris Barnett reports. Chris also adds the senators may be in session one additional time in the year 2018 should they need to address any action or inaction when the governor on bills awaiting his signature. A longtime flight attendant files a federal lawsuit against United Airlines for age discrimination. Susanna Cato is a 62-year-old woman diagnosed with MGUS, which is a condition with an abnormal protein is in the blood. Cato began her medical leave back in July 2013. At the time, her union agreement permitted up to six years of medical leave, which was later changed to a maximum of three. She alleges she received an undated letter from United stating the joint collective bargaining agreement required she return to work by July 2016 or be terminated. While preparing to go back to work, she fell ill again and provided her employer with a sick note which later resulted in her termination. According to her complaint, United has intentionally targeted its older flight attendants, sometimes trying to force them to retire under threat of termination, whether objectively or legally justified or not, so as to retain younger flight attendants and generally bring down the average age of its flight attendants. We're going to take a commercial break. Please stay tuned. We are back after this. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. Cheers to 80 years. It's our 80th anniversary and the gifts are on us. 80 gift certificates, 8 shopping sprees, 8 staycations, and one round trip flyaway for two to Manila. So how do you enter? Cavos Insurance personal home and auto customers are automatically entered. Non-Cavos customers may enter by receiving a qualified quote. It's our way of saying thank you for trusting us for the past 80 years. For more details, visit Cavos.com slash giveaway or call 472-6816. Cavos Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. It's Micronesia Mall's 30th anniversary, and to celebrate, we are giving away a new Kia Soul LX, a Mazda 3i Sport, the popular Honda Civic LX, and 30 Manila flyaways during our 30th anniversary drive-away flyaway. Win three great cars from Triple J Auto Group, 30 flyaways from Philippine Airlines, plus thousands of prizes from Burger King and Foot Locker when you play Micronesia Mall's 30th anniversary drive-away flyaway. Be merry, be bright, and make shopping all right with holiday gift cards from Chuck E. Cheese's Guam, Ruby Tuesday, and King's Restaurants. Receive special offers with every purchase for extra holiday happiness. See stores for details and have fun this season from all of us at the GFS Group. Welcome back. Construction of the future Marine Corps base will continue, says the Navy in a letter responding to the Guam Preservation Trust, who raised concern that the current construction is impeding on the preservation of the ancient Chamorro village of Magua. Rear Admiral Shoshana Chatfield says in an agreement between the State Historic Preservation Office and Joint Region Marianas, quote, the Navy recovered previously displaced Laddie and Luzon elements in consideration of their cultural significance, but did not commit to preserve the site adding that to stop working on construction will cause delays and present unacceptable risks to include to 
the schedule of the Marine Corps relocation from Japan to Guam. Joe Kanata, chief program officer at GPT, says overall the public should know what's going on regarding cultural resources management in the base. That is spelled out in the agreement. The full letter can be viewed on our website. Well, it's raining now, and quite heavily so, and the downpour today caused quite a mess for our friends down in Marizzo. Go ahead and take a look at this viewer-submitted video we were sent as cars and school buses equally could be seen slowly moving through these streets in the southern village. The heavy rain once again caused more unwanted flooding for drivers and residents down there. Village Mayor Ernest Chargloff said previously, this has been an ongoing problem for years, and floodwaters often bring debris that clog up the drains. Today, he says, quote, as usual, we won't get assistance until the rains subside and floodwaters recede. That's when the debris is removed. Yet the people continue to wish for better days and more compassionate actions and responses. A cup of joe with the officers of the Guam Police Department. More than a handful of GPD officers started their hump day morning at the Wednesdays and Wendy's in Upper Tumon for the latest Coffee with the Cop program. The community outreach event allows our local officers to interact with residents from around the island in a rather intimate setting. GPD Acting Commander Major Manny Chong. That we're doing this because, you know, uh, it's not a secret that we're lacking with manpower. Okay, and that, that's basically government-wide. So we're doing the best we can by, you know, reaching out to the people, uh, getting their concerns, see if we can address some of their concerns immediately. Those that we, we can address immediately, we'll work on it. We'll get uh, either other agencies involved that can help them out. And, uh, you know, with our neighborhood watch programs, we uh, reach out to these uh, different uh, sections of the community to uh, teach them how to be less attractive of victims. The department's Coffee with a Cop program has been held at multiple locations this year. Stay tuned for their next event. Well, the Guam Community College and the Hyatt Regency Guam are building up our island's number one industry as the former's president, Dr. Mary Okada, and the latter's general manager, Sophia Chu, recently signed a memorandum of understanding allowing hospitality students to complete 135 hours of practical experience at the Tumon Hotel under the supervision of instructors. With so many GCC alumni already on the Hyatt team, Chu says they look forward to giving back and fostering the professional development of the next generation. That is not a bad way to get experience. Right. Nice people down there. Stay tuned. Sports is next. But first, let's take a look at your weather forecast. that an alpha insurance customer needs a claim settled immediately i'm on it in the event of an accident theft or breakdown each of our alpha insurer agents are trained to go above and beyond this is my stop there she is target acquired agent alpha. yes For a great way to celebrate the season, bring your family to Micronesia Mall's holiday lights and snow shows. Share the excitement of a magical musical Christmas experience featuring thousands of programmed lights and special effects. Santa will be there, and he promised to make it snow during every show. Catch a ride on the Super Train for just $1 and have your children's photo taken with Santa at specially priced packages. The holiday lights and snow shows are only during Christmas and only in Micronesia Mall. 
MTO, professional janitorial services with a warm hospitality touch. MTO gives that gift year-round. Pressure wash roofs, pressure wash driveways, lawn service, home cleaning, carpet restoration, office cleaning, commercial cleaning, commercial window cleaning, floor care. When cleaning is in order, MTO has you covered. Call 647-6861 to inquire on how you can receive the maintenance you deserve. MTO, celebrating 30 years with you, Guam. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. All right, United Guam Marathon is coming up on April 14th of 2019. And here to talk about the big draw, we have Coach Kit. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So the big draw, this is not just a little raffle. You got some big stuff that you're giving away at the UGM. Yes, yeah, so this year they're going to have um, a one-night staycation at the PIC. And they will also have a one year with a Boca Box, Boca Box uh, subscription. Yeah, good. that's pretty yeah. good, that's you know, good. especially for Runners athletes. Need to meal prep and stuff exactly. like that. Exactly, learning know. a lot to eat. And then also they will have um, a $500 gift card right. for gas. That goes a long way. Yeah. Driving so that Exactly. So, <laughs> and, I mean, and so much more. A yeah, there's more. a lot of it, uh, and this is for the uh, runners that register ahead of time. Obviously, if yes. you're running the 5K, 10K, half, or full, you probably already started training, so you know you're registered. You need to do that now because uh, then you can win some of these big prizes. Exactly. So the early cutoff is uh, January 31st. Okay. And with that, if you sign up by that time, you will have a personalized bib, which you will be... You get to personalize it. Yeah. What are you going to personalize yours with? Um... I probably would just put Kit. There you go. Yeah, just, just my name. But you can have a name community. where you can probably put something funny. But I think there's a 10 character. But okay. yeah. Nice. It could be fun. Uh, so again, the website, if people want to register? Yeah, so it's uh, www.unitedguammarathon.com. And it is a huge event. The post-race festivities all happening down there in uh, Tumon. And the big draw, of course, a lot of prizes on the yes. line, plus uh, a lot of food and barbecue yep. afterwards. Oh, yeah. It's a party from... 2 a.m. in the morning all the way till the afternoon. So yeah. it's an all-day event. Yeah, it really is. It's going to be yeah. a great time. So we're looking forward to it. Once again, that's the United Guam Marathon on April 14th of 2019. Thank you very much, yeah. Coach Kit. Thank you for having me. And right now we're going to take a look at some soccer action. Under the bright lights of the GFA soccer field in Dededo, it was the Islanders versus the Eagles facing off for the AAAG High School Soccer League Championship title. The JFK Islanders with the comeback in the second half, Taylor Bonner and Noah Mueller to seal the victory over the Harvest Christian Academy Eagles. The final score, 3-1, to one, with Harvest's Young Min Kim scoring for Harvest in the first half. Aside from the Islanders celebrating an undefeated season, JFK's Eddie Cho was awarded the MVP championship honor. As for the consolation, match, the Father Duaneus Memorial School Friars beat the St. Paul Warriors 1-0, the goal from Joseph Green. The AAAG Boys High School All-Island First Team was also recognized. They were JFK's Alan Aranis, goalkeeper, defenders Harvest Ethan Elwell, St. Paul's Nichika Furman, Friars Morgan McKenna, and Camden Camacho. Midfielders, FD's Kyle Hollyholly, Guam's Joshua Bamba, JFK's Eddie Cho, and Islanders Christian Keto. Forwards, Harvest James Lee, and and JFK Taylor Bonner, a utility player, Robert New, and All-Island MVP went to Harvest Ethan Elwell. All right, congratulations, everybody. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at your Gatorade Game Changer. His eyes on the prize, 17-year-old Matias Calvo is a wrestler with heart. He's got the medal to prove it. Our team, uh, Father Duenas, we won the championship for the boys for the All-Island Tournament. Yeah. And I, I placed gold in the 195-pound weight division. A golden win. All I remember is just trying to get in, into the zone before my match. And then during, um, I kind of have a clear mind when I'm wrestling. I don't really think about too much. And I just go out there and try and uh, perform my best. A performance that this FD Fryer carried on from his junior year. This is my second season uh, that I uh, got gold. Um, so it just felt good to get in my senior year because uh, it's my last ride. So I, I just wanted to um, make my mom and dad proud, my whole family and my coaches. Matisse is also following in the footsteps of his family. Lenny and I know him, my two older brothers, they both uh, wrestled at Father Duaneus. They both uh, got gold 
at least their senior year, and um, they really instilled that um, wrestling into our family because our family, nobody in our family wrestled up until us. And our dad, my dad's a rugby player, my mom's a paddler, so it was kind of new, and they they just sort of got into the sport and they loved it, and so I got into it too, and it's just become a big part of all of our lives. An athlete who has already learned a valuable life lesson from the sport. Perseverance and, and diligence because it's a, there's a lot of preparation that goes into it and a lot of moments where you're not really going to get the result you want, but you just have to come back the next day, work harder, and just um, add to your your accomplishments. And his hard work isn't going to stop at the end of his senior year. Matias has been accepted to start college at Dartmouth next fall. But he'll play rugby. You have to really put in the work in the off season, at training, and then you'll see the fruits of your labor. All right, now the NFL season is winding down, but the playoff race is heating up. Here's a look at this week's games on the stations of KUAM. All right, NFL, we've got on TV 11, 4 a.m.